Year 7, Macbeth, it's Sunday evening, and hopefully the half the population who are probably on the internet at the moment watching films, looking at YouTube, won't interfere too much with the signal. But we are past the end of the play and are merely going to review themes and write what's called a tagline. Before I tell you what a tagline is, let's review Calabrator. Remember Macbeth talked about punishing the cruel ministers of the fiend Macbeth. What's a collaborator? You may remember that it's someone who cooperates uh, treacherously with someone committing a crime. But why would Malcolm need to be so brutal towards Macbeth's collaborators? Why? Why punish a student who's throwing shoes around the lesson? It's to set an example to others. A tagline is... A short line or phrase which sells something. So a tagline for a movie, Star Wars, might be um, the boy who became an emperor or something like that. Um, it's basically something short. It's a short prick. It's a short stab. It's a short spike from the Swedish tag. And fate, you also need to know what fate means. It's one predetermined course of life. Basically your destiny, what's going to happen in the future. Things outside of your control fate well you don't know you have to find out um so what tagline could you use to sell the play Macbeth? don't think about it too much now because i'll come back to it later and fate on fate early on in the play who predicts what Macbeth's fate will be those three women what are they called they predict what Macbeth's fate will be and on tagline, then, what, which of these is a synonym, basically a word that means the same thing? A slogan, or an essay, or a movie? Which of those is a synonym? Which of those means tagline? So today, you're going to discuss various themes in the play, write about them. You're going to, I'm going to invite you to write two paragraphs, and then write a short statement summarising the play. In other words, making a tagline. So, um, yeah, so uh, let's just have a quick visual summary of the play. Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, Duncan, the victim, Malcolm, who returns at the end, the porter, I think, uh, who gives us a satirical speech saying that the castle is staged to people who don't behave as they're supposed to. Um, Banquo and his son at the bottom left, and Lady Macduff and her son, bottom right. You'll remember that Macbeth sends his assassins after both of those families at the bottom. So, uh, you are going to choose two of the following eight statements to write about. Then, you're going to give us your opinion, tell us whether you agree or disagree, or whether you agree to a point. Tell us which characters are involved in the statement. What do you know about the context of the play? It's important that you know something about how audiences will have responded to these statements or this play. And then think of the bigger issues of themes that Shakespeare wanted us to think about. Crime, punishment, um, uh, treason or uh, loyalty, the supernatural, witchcraft, religion, and so on. Um, what's my friend here saying? The witches are to blame for everything that happens in Macbeth. That's a statement, for example. Then she's going to think about it. Uh, what's her opinion? Oh, this, these are these, these are the statements. Okay, so we'll just flash through these. This is a play about madness. Macbeth isn't relevant to a modern audience. These are some of the statements we'll be going through later. When you're writing not just about Macbeth, but in anything in English. Think about these as assessment objectives. There are four things, basically, that examiners measure you on. They measure you on AO1, which is your ability to make an opinion, make a point, and find a reference or a quotation to back up your statement. For example, um, the porter is comic. For example, he speaks in prose. Um, AO2, analyze the language, form, and structure. Basically, this is your ability to describe um, why certain words are being used. 
and what the words are. For example, Lady Macbeth uses the metaphor, um, or Lady Macbeth uses the command, give me the daggers, which shows she's... Or you... No, there's a, the AO1 would be um, Lady Macbeth is bossy because she uses the command. She says, give me the... AO2, the analysis would be the command shows that she expects people to follow her orders. So that's an analyzing language. AO3, this is about the context. Um, this is showing that you understand the context within which the play was written. So I would say uh, Lady Macbeth shows a Shakespearean audience that women were not always the submissive, delicate creatures without political power, or it represents the frustrations women had without political power. Um, and then whatever I said earlier had to be spelled correctly. The punctuation had to be around the quotation marks. I had to put commas in the correct place and so on. That's AO4. So those four points, if you include those four points in your answer, you are a strong student. So choose two of these, please. Statement one, the witches are to blame for everything that happens in Macbeth. Do you agree that Macbeth wouldn't have been in trouble if the witches hadn't have bumped into him? Or do you think he would have been as ambitious anyway? The key theme of Macbeth is ambition. It drives everyone in the play. Is Lady Macbeth ambitious? Is Banquo ambitious? Is King Duncan ambitious? Is Malcolm ambitious? Macduff backs the winning horse at the end by returning successfully to the throne. How important is ambitious? Hang on, this peacock's piping up again. It's mating time. Uh, statement three. Arranging the murder of Banquo is the most shocking thing that Macbeth does in the play. Would you like to choose this statement? If so, compare this murder with the other murders Macbeth arranges or even commits. Arranging the murder of Macduff's family is the most shocking thing that Macbeth does in the play. Do you think that pitiful execution of the loving boy and uh, the loyal wife is the most shocking thing that Macbeth does? They don't even have any political ambition. They aren't a threat to Macbeth. Perhaps that scene is the most shocking that you uh, experienced. And five, Lady Macbeth is a real villain of the play. Do you think her ambition drives Macbeth, or do you think she's a victim of male, um, the, the world of men? Statement six, Macbeth has no control over what happens in the play. He's a victim of fate. Do you think the witch has manipulated him into doing what he did, or do you think he decides to kill those extra people beyond Duncan. Is it Macbeth's fault Banquo dies? Is it, is it Macbeth's fault that Lady Macduff is slaughtered? Is it Macbeth's fault that, um, well, that Duncan dies as well? Or is he simply a, a pawn in the game, um, a victim of the witches? Um, Macbeth is a play about madness. He sees a ghost. He carelessly says that he doesn't need any battlefield re reports. Bring me no reports. Let them fly all. I cannot taint with fear until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. Do you think that's just mad? Or um, do you think Lady Macbeth's madness as well is, is another reason why you would agree? Or would you disagree? Do you think they're just stressed? Beth is not suitable for modern audience. Do you think the themes of uh, ambition, violence, love has no place in modern audience? Do you think it is, wouldn't be, it wouldn't entertain someone now, or do you think these are timeless themes of um, of how people in power aren't to be trusted, or um, or people have ideas above their political ambitions that can destroy them? Do you think they're timeless themes or do you think it's not relevant today? So here's an example of how to answer. Your AO1, remember, is to make a point and find evidence. So here's the point. It could be argued that Lady Macbeth makes a deliberate choice to become evil. So the, the statement is, is Lady Macbeth an evil character? And here's the example. So example, she calls on the spirits to fill her with direst cruelty. 
Um, or you could say Lady Macbeth is ambitious because she says, um, Lady Macbeth is evil because she says, look like the serpent, but be, no, look like the flower, but be the serpent. So, but the point here is that she's evil because she says, fill me with direst cruelty. Now AO2 is analyze the language. So what's the language? Direst cruelty. The language here is like a spell invoking sinister spirits. She uses emotive words like murdering, mischief and hell to reinforce the message that she wishes to be evil. Um, it's also interesting that this is the first scene in which we see Lady Macbeth. So she's establishing her desire to be wicked very early in the play. Um, that's AO2, language analysis. So she, this paragraph incorporates little quotations from different parts of the play. And we also need to show that we know what women in general would have been like or what Shakespearean audiences would have said about her conjuring AO3. This speech would have been particularly shocking for a Shakespearean audience who believed in the supernatural and would therefore see this as a terrible act which would have lasting consequences. So if you can prove you know something about witchcraft or women or anything relevant in Shakespeare's life, you have shown your AO3 proved that. It's a good habit to get into because in about 50% of your literature exams, you're asked to find some sort of reference to the writer and their life and times. And finally, is it spelled correctly? Yes, which means AO4 is complete. Um, the punctuation is in the right place. The sentences are, are complex and quotations have quotation marks. So just choose two of those and write a paragraph about each. Let's work on taglines now. The second task is to write a tagline for Macbeth. Taglines, for example, an elite, uni an entire universe, one, once and for all. Basically what you'd see in a film poster. Uh, that's Infinity War. Always be yourself unless you can be Batman. This is Lego Batman. Um, so if you're making a film of Macbeth, what would the tagline be? Uh, here's an, by the way, here's another example. And by the way, I should apologize to the student I met at school a couple of days ago. He gave me uh, a poster, a film poster to work on. We found something online my work didn't quite save properly so i don't have access to it. i can't remember what we looked at um it was a blue poster there were some animals in it i i just don't remember what it is so i found pocahontas an american legend comes to life pocahontas uh i can show you taglines aladdin imagine if you had three wishes three hopes three dreams and they all could come true now. Um, that's actually quite similar to Macbeth, isn't it? Three witches, three wishes, three witches, three hopes. Interesting. It's interesting that this, the witches appear in, in scene three, actually, come to think of it, because witches are obsessed with the number three. They always refer to the number three. And they appear in scene three. Interesting. I wonder if they appear in act four, scene three. Could anyone look up, look that up? Um, imagine if you were told, I bet money they appear in Act 4, Scene 3, actually. Um, imagine if you were told you could be king instantly. That's my tagline for Macbeth. Or, would you kill for the woman you love? Or, loyal Macbeth chooses witchcraft over God and brings down a nation. Your turn. Create a tagline you could use to summarize the plot of Macbeth. After you do those two statements... Any problems with this can be discussed with me at the Learning Clinic on Monday at 9.30 in the morning. We'll go through this lesson together in slow time, in comfortable time. See you then. If not, see you next week.